in versions of double slider crank chain. We have already discussed that when one of links is fixed in a kinematic chain, it is called a mechanism. So we can obtain as many mechanisms as the number of links in a kinematic chain by fixing, in turn, different links in a kinematic chain. This method of obtaining different mechanisms by fixing different links in a kinematic chain is known as inversion of the mechanism. Types of inversions in kinematic chains 1. 4-bar chain or quadric cyclic chain 2. Single slider crank chain 3. Double slider crank chain Inversions of double slider crank chain 1. Scotch yoke mechanism 2. Oldham's coupling 3. Elliptical trammel First inversion of double slider crank chain is scotch yoke mechanism or also known as slotted link mechanism. A scotch yoke mechanism is a mechanical device that converts rotary motion into linear motion or vice versa. It is also known as a slotted link mechanism. The scotch yoke mechanism is a simple work of mechanism which is implemented in various applications right from toys to some engines as well. A scotch yoke mechanism is a reciprocating motion that converts rotational motion into a slider or a linear motion and vice versa. It is also known as the slotted link mechanism. The setup of this mechanism is quite simple as it has one input part I dotty the crank and the slider moves accordingly. The slider has a component called scotch which resembles the shape of a yoke. Also the scotch yoke is used in many walls where the flow of fluid is to be flown in sections per unit of time. This mechanism has a simple construction which is depicted in the figure below. Links in the scotch yoke mechanism 1. Frame, which is fixed 2. Crank 3. Slider 4. Yoke A yoke is free to slide inside frame. Kinematic pairs in the scotch yoke mechanism. 1. Frame and crank forms one turning pair. 2. Crank and slider forms another turning pair. 3. Yoke and slider forms one sliding pair. 4. Frame and yoke forms another sliding pair. Construction Let's now discuss the construction of the mechanism. The construction of the mechanism is quite simple as discussed earlier. It has got only one input link so the prediction is easy that the DOF of the mechanism is 1. We can even cross verify it with the formula of degree of freedom DOF is equal to 3 N1 to J H. Where, where N, J, H are the number of links, lower pairs and higher pairs respectively. Here in this case N is equal to 4, J is equal to 4, H is equal to 0 and so after equating the values in the equation we get the degree of freedom is equal to 1. The sliding yoke moves in a simple harmonic motion and its displacement is decided by the length of the crank since the rotation is made by the shaft. Working Principle Let's now discuss the working principle of the mechanism. As we know that, since the scotch yoke mechanism converts rotational motion into a slider or linear motion, there is a simple working principle behind it. Initially, power is supplied to the DC motor, which is connected to the shaft, further the shaft begins to rotate, and subsequently, the crank starts sliding the slider pin inside the yoke, and hence the mechanism starts. When the slider completes one full cycle it is said to have completed one stroke. Here the displacement of the slider pin depends on the crank. In other words, the clockwise revolution of the crank is completed at the same time that the yoke sliding is completely moved forward. When this position takes longer to return stoke. After some time has passed, the crank will continue to rotate to return to its original position of the rotation. As a result, the yoke moves backward and returns to its original position. As a result, the crank must complete one full revolution. At the same time, the yoke will complete the forward and backward sliding movement. With a full revolution of the crank, the yoke will slide through an equal length of the crank. Applications of Scotch Yoke Mechanism 
Scotch yoke mechanism finds an application in various materials right from small kids toys to pneumatic Scotch yoke actuator with high pressure ball valve. They are used even in the syringe control and hacksaw as well. The internal parts of machines which are difficult to cut are cut down using this mechanism by giving them the appropriate input values. One of the best applications of the Scotch yoke mechanism is the Burke engine. A Burke engine is a two-stroke engine that was an attempt by Russell Burke. As per the design given by Sir Russell, the engine has two pistons which are horizontally placed and are 180 degrees out of phase. This arrangement is made such that the piston is placed appropriately and is no interference. The diagram shows the design of the Burke engine. Second inversion of double slider crank chain is Oldham's coupling. An Oldham's coupling is used for connecting to parallel shafts whose axes are at a small distance apart. The shafts are coupled in such a way that if one shaft rotates, the other shaft also rotates at the same speed. This inversion is obtained by fixing the link to, as shown in figure. Links are labeled frame, fixed, is link 1. Shaft and flange on left hand is link 2. Shaft and flange on right hand is link 4. Intermediate piece is link 3. Kinematic pairs in Oldham's coupling are frame and shaft left hand side forms one turning pair. Frame and shaft right hand side forms another turning pair. Flange left hand side and intermediate piece forms one sliding pair. Flange right hand side and intermediate piece forms another sliding pair. These flanges have diametrical slots cut in their inner faces as shown in figure. The intermediate piece, link 3, which is a circular disc, have two tongues, I diametrical projections, T1 and T2 on each face at right angels to each other. The tongues on the link 3 closely fit into the slots in the two flanges, link 2 and link 4. The link 3 can slide or reciprocate in the slots in the flanges. When the driving shaft A is rotated, the flange C, link 2, causes the intermediate piece. Link 3, to rotate at the same angle through which the flange has rotated, and it further rotates the flange D, link 4, at the same angle and thus the shaft B rotates. Hence links 2, 3 and 4 have the same angular velocity at every instant. A little consideration will show that there is a sliding motion between the link 3 and each of the other links 2 and 4. Application of Oldham's coupling This coupling is used to connect to shaft having some eccentricity in shaft axis means offset. Third inversion of double slider crank chain is elliptical trammel. Links in elliptical trammel. 1. Frame is fixed. 2. PB link between slider A and slider B with extended portion. 3. Slider A. 4. Slider B. Kinematic pairs of elliptical trammel. 1. Slider A and frame forms one sliding. 2. Slider B and frame forms another sliding. 3. Slider A and link PB forms one turning. 4. Slider B and link PB forms another turning. Construction of elliptical trammel This mechanism is an inversion of double slider crank chain. It has two sliding and two turning pairs. As shown in figure, it has rectangular frame with vertical and horizontal slots. Two sliders are free to slide inside both slots. A link PB connects to sliders. Working of elliptical trammel when one of the slider is given reciprocating motion, it is transmitted to another slider through the link PB. It is observed that while the two sliders slide into respective slots, the PTP traces the path of an ellipse. The major axis and minor axis of the ellipse can be changed by changing the point which traces the path of an ellipse. Application of elliptical trammel This mechanism is used for drawing ellipse of required size. See in the figure elliptical trammel with one point traces ellipse.
In next figure, if yellow link between sliders is fixed, then watch how mechanism it moves and works. Conclusion: We can create different mechanisms or inversions of double slider crank mechanism. Thank you very much for watching full video. Please subscribe, like, and share channel. PGK Kadam Academy.